Hello and welcome to Aviation Audio Video on the Road. I'm Tom Rinker and I'm here at the first annual Flying Magazine Aviation Expo waiting for the influx of aviators, enthusiasts, and the people who love them to enter the exhibit hall. What strikes me about this show in particular is that there is something for everyone, from state-of-the-art aircraft and equipment to exotic cars to cool jewelry. This show will most likely keep your attention throughout its three days of fun. And so I'll wander the exhibits, check out the seminars and workshop sessions, and try to capture the most interesting and new offerings I can find. Now yesterday was the Parade of Planes, which is definitely a showstopper. A huge crowd was on hand to see and hear the arrival of several dozen unique aircraft. I have to say, there's something about an Eclipse 550 roaring down a city street to create a sensation, if not in the mind, certainly in the chest. I was able to catch up with some of them after they parked next to the convention hall. The CTLS is a light sport aircraft with all the pizzazz of a full-sized airplane. I talked with Kenny Sherato at Flight Designs West and asked him all about the sophisticated avionics package on board. And it has a built-in autopilot in it and uh, you have a, a separate comm uh, radio system and you have a 796 Garmin. Uh, GPS mounted in the center panel. Hi, I'm Burl Sanders, uh, owner of Free Flight Composites from Falcon, Colorado. And uh, we help individuals build aircrafts like the one here. And uh, designed to be a high performance, two seat sport plane. It's also very good for cross country travel. It'll travel at 260 miles an hour on almost 30 miles to the gallon. It's very similar to a long easy or very easy, but this particular design uses carbon in the wings and uh, spars, so it has a stiffer airframe and is better suited for aerobatics. Um, and it also has a fully retractable landing gear, which uh, improves the efficiency for in flight. And it also has uh, a more sporty type handling than a very easy or a long easy. The avionics in this aircraft are all uh, 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 solid state modern. Uh, electronic flight information systems, uh, engine monitoring systems, as well as navigation systems are all state-of-the-art uh, and coupled to a very powerful uh, autopilot. It allows the aircraft to be uh, uh, flown in uh, IFR conditions, and uh, which really raises the utility of the aircraft. Uh, my name is Tom Binsfeld from California Sea Ray. Out uh, here in Palm Springs uh, with the Progressive Aerodyne's two-place amphibian, the Sea Ray. It's a light sport amphibian and uh, in, uh, recently certified and available uh, uh, for purchase. She'll get off the water at gross weight at four, in 400 feet. Um, gentle stall characteristics, uh, just a beautifully handling aircraft. Yeah, this is a Sea Ray Elite, which has uh, practically every option available from the factory. So this is the Glass Air Sportsman. And to really understand a sportsman, you have to understand that the DNA of the airplane, the heart of the airplane, is a float plane. And the airplane not only has, is a great float plane, but it also has versatility in terms of the landing gear. So you can change landing gear configurations easily. The airplane can be a tail dragger. It can be a trike or it can be a float plane and oftentimes owners cycle through those configurations. So the Sportsman is an experimental amateur built airplane which means that normally people build them from a kit. Most of our airplanes are built at the Arlington factory by people who engage in the Two Weeks to Taxi program. And Two Weeks to Taxi is unique in the industry. People come to Arlington, they take delivery of their kit, they build the kit under the supervision of people who are masters at building these airplanes. Uh, and when they're finished doing their 51%, the airplane gets an airworthiness certificate. And then we finish up the airplane. So this one, for example, has advanced flight systems. It's got a Garmin 650. It's got dual Atahar systems. They're fully independent of each other. Uh, and so it's a terrific IFR platform, actually. So as I meandered through the rows of exhibitor displays, I ran into a really great concept from a guy who, as an engineer, developed his product over the last 18 years and has perfected it into a device that the FAA allows as a modification on most aircraft. He's Mark Corrin from Alpha Systems AOA. 
His angle of attack indicator is something I feel every plane should have on board. As you increase your angle of attack, your margin of lift over stall decreases to a point where we calibrate at optimum alpha, which is the blue, or the blue donut here. And then once you get past the top of that blue donut, you start getting on the other side of the power curve where you're starting to sink, but you're still flying the aircraft. That, that, the, the turbulent airflow is starting to come up further and further from the backside of the wing. As you get too high, you'll identify a stall deep into the red here, or the, the triangle there. It's just different presentations that has to connect with each pilot or the airplane that you're currently flying. Well, some of you may know that I am a flight simulator nut, and there are no shortages of flight sims on display at the Expo. In fact, they kind of run the gamut from this ground-based motion simulator that generates long lines at air shows to pilot-oriented training simulators like the Cirrus model on the Touch Sim. Well, my name is Chuck Calley. I'm a factory instructor for Cirrus Aircraft, and uh, we use Fly This Sim simulators in Duluth, Minnesota for training new Cirrus owners. At least it's one of our simulators. Uh, what we love about the Cirrus uh, platform on the Fly This Sim is that a pilot can literally take the checklist out of the airplane, bring it to the simulator, and use a checklist to fire it up and fly it and practice uh, procedures just as if they were in the airplane. There we are, we rolled that baby right on. Now for any one of us who has tried the Bell 206 simulation in Flight Simulator 10 with a joystick, a real set of helicopter controls is awesome to take hold of. But before I hopped in for a wobbly trip around an oil rig, I talked with Chris Ryan of Ryan Aerospace about the benefits of helicopter training with his control system. So this, simu this simulator is, uh, uh, it takes up a very small footprint, even though it's a one-to-one -one scale of a real helicopter cockpit, but it has a bunch of fantastic features. For example, it has a force trim release function in the cyclic that you don't normally find in low-cost helicopter simulators. A uh, little rocker switch under the seat will make the pedals move back and forward so anyone can fit in there. There's a friction control on the collective and the uh, and the avionics that uh, have been provided by precision flight controls are state of the art. So from here I saw what looked like a sea of simulators, so naturally I needed to find out more. Well this is the IMC Club uh, Instrument Proficiency Center. Um, it's an exercise for pilots to sharpen their skills or their IFR skills. And uh, we have uh, several flight instructors uh, operating eight simulators here, provided by Redbird and supported by Hartzell, Jepson, and Pilot Edge. Pilots, when they go through the scenario, uh, are connected to Pilot Edge for ATC, and so they, they go through each exercise and are scored, and a flight instructor goes through with them to guide them through. Uh, it's been a great experience so far. So uh, we have everything from uh, instrument pilots that haven't flown instruments in 20 years to uh, instrument student pilots to people that are pretty proficient and current and just want to uh, take a simulated flight. It's happening more often that when you look skyward, you don't always see manned airplanes. In fact, this quadcopter and other drones as they are sometimes called are at the center of some controversy with the FAA and this subject was heavily discussed at the Expo. So what is the FAA position on UAS or unmanned aerial systems? I stopped in at the seminar where Brad Hayden of Robotic Skies and Flying Magazine's own Steve Pope were sharing insight. Well, the FAA has incrementally been um, ratcheting up the penalties, and so they've, they've come out saying, well, you must be a private pilot, and then if you do something with a UAV that is in violation of regulation, you are in uh, danger of losing your pilot, private uh, pilot privileges, and you'll actually get your certificate yanked for something you do with a UAV. They came out this week with a statement saying, if you fly a UAV over a larger stadium uh, that's occupied with people, you'll face jail time, potentially. You know, although the exhibitors have been highly informative, this expo offers so much more. The Flying Magazine folks made sure that this would be a total learning experience. So the seminars here are rich with valuable and relevant topics 
so I visited as many of the seminars as I could and found some insight that I'll keep with me forever, like how to handle spins and upset attitudes. Judy Phelps, Master CFI, was excellent at straightening us out. Any questions so far? Good. Uh, elevator. So back to his question. He says, well, why would you not put the elevator forward prematurely to break the stall? Because it doesn't. So when you're spinning, if you put the elevator forward prematurely, what happens is the nose of your airplane drops closer to the spin axis and the rate of rotation increases. So you want to, you know, make sure you're holding it all the way back. Or if you don't have the yoke or the stick all the way back and you're spinning, put it there. So before I go, I would like to thank all the folks at Flying Magazine, Lyft Event Management, and the Abbey Agency for working hard to produce a first-rate exposition. And I would also like to thank them for their hospitality and help. So until next time, I'm Tom Rinker saying so long from Aviation Audio Video on the Road, and as always, keep looking up.